I'm Chris Brutally, IAB's Vice President of Industry Insights and Content Strategy. The most surprising finding when I originally started looking at the data was the fact that the growth was not as high as I expected it to be. It was about 5% ad revenue growth year over year. I was expecting a little higher. I was thinking uh, high single digits, maybe low double digits. Um, so that surprised me at first. Um, after looking under the hood, I kind of understood why that happened, and it made a lot of sense. But what really then surprised me and made me very encouraged was the fact that growth will more than double that in 2024, up to 12%, which is really great for the space. And it really just comes off the heels of the initiatives that they put in place in 2023, as things were a little slower, to then make 2024 a stronger year. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's a number of things, and I would say it starts with measurement, right? So measurement, and this is kind of a two-fold answer regarding measurement, and that is continuing the innovations that they have put in place to make podcast measurement even more effective and efficient than it has been in the past. Um, and also on top of that, making the buy side more aware of the things that they have been doing and are doing, right? And we're seeing some really cool things in that space. We're seeing Horizon Next, uh, come with a new attribution platform. They're working with a company called Arts AI. Claritas is doing is partnering in a lot of those different initiatives. Uh, we're seeing iHeart do some really cool things. They worked with Mattress Firm, I believe, um, last year to do some pixel-based attribution. And now Nielsen is uh, doing some really cool things to work podcasts into their cross-platform measurement. So it's not only the continued innovation of what they've been doing, but also you know essentially making the buy side more aware of that. So measurement increased investment uh, into um, programmatic buying on the podcast space. It's only about 10% per our last year's study. That will continue to move forward, which will make it easier for the buy side to invest programmatically. Events is a huge thing that we're seeing. Uh, the Stuff You Should Know podcast, which I'm a big fan of, they're on the road constantly. Um, we just saw Wondery talk about events. Uh, so really taking the, uh, the talent out on the road is a huge thing. Video is a big thing. Uh, we just saw a presentation again from Wondery. They talked about being on Amazon Prime. Uh, we're seeing um, different companies literally lost fat, uh, launch fast channels with their podcast talent. That's a huge thing. Um, we're seeing the continued growth in um, like aggressive promotion strategies. You know, we're starting to see now the um, the audience development essentially aspect of podcasting, you know, taking cues from traditional digital in, in terms of driving awareness. Um, we're seeing, we're going to see tons of really strategic audience growth strategies and promotional strategies. Um, and I would say the last thing is, is just moving into more creative distribution strategies with third party partners. That will help it grow and then the listenership will continue to grow as well. So I expect the 12% growth to totally happen in 2024. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great question. So, so much of that has to do with the fact of how listeners are really uh, leaning into those spaces. So I did some research on Edison's, their Q4 2023 most listened to podcasts, and a third of them are comedy, right? So you have Joe Rogan, you have Conan, those are just two of the biggest personalities who have podcasts. Um, but you have so many uh, comedic talent and people that are unknown that have comedy podcasts that listeners have leaned into, and they've become incredibly popular. Um, and then you have sports. And what I think is what's happening with sports is you have personalities who are big, apart from podcasting, now have podcasts, and those podcasts have taken off. First example are the Kelsey brothers. The one Kelsey brother, Travis, he's dating Taylor Swift, right? So now you have one of the most popular stars on the planet and two of the most popular football players now have a podcast. That's totally taken off. You have the Colin Coward Show. You, of course, you have Bill Simmons. Um, and Pat McAfee, right? So you guys, have, you have guys that are on TV now moving those uh, personalities and those shows into the podcasting space and sports has totally taken off. 
I'm gonna wrap a bow around that, and that is the fact that audiences, we live in a very polarized country right now. There's a lot of serious things going on in the global, from a global standpoint, and consumers are looking for lighter fare, and comedy and sports offer that. Thus, if you see audiences lean into those, you see the number of podcasts grow, you see their listenership grow, and that's a great space for advertisers to be, and that's what's happening there. So diversity in the podcast landscape, and what we're talking about here is that the diversity of the amount of, of different types of shows. And that is because, you know, the lift is kind of easier for podcasts than for other types of media, right? Like we, were, we just heard the folks upstairs talking about, I started this podcast out of my closet. Because of that, there are millions of different types of podcasts on so many different types of topics, right? So advertisers who have very specific needs can go across and buy against all those different types of podcasts, whether it be home or gardening or whatever sort of niche topic you're into. That long tail of niche topics drives so much ad revenue that if you add those up, it actually counts for a larger percentage of podcast revenue than all the other major categories. So that's a really unique proposition that podcasting as a medium offers. And that is why we're seeing the quote unquote other or niche categories drive the podcasting space from an ad revenue standpoint.